In the second part of this problem, we're asked to work out whether the collision between our two rugby players is an elastic or an inelastic collision. Now the way that we decide whether a collision is elastic or inelastic is by making a comparison of the total kinetic energy before the collision with the total kinetic energy after the collision. So we'll work out the kinetic energy before and after and we'll reach a decision whether or not the collision is elastic. Before the collision takes place, the total kinetic energy available is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy of each of the players. So for the forward, that's one half times his mass of 110 kilograms times the square of his speed, which was 5 meters per second. To that, we'll add the kinetic energy of the back, that's one half times his mass of 85 times the square of his speed, which was 7. Remember that kinetic energy is a scalar, therefore direction is not important. When we work these out, we find that we have 1,375 joules of energy for the forward and 2,082 joules of energy for the back, giving a total kinetic energy before the collision of 3,457 joules. Let's look now at the kinetic energy after the collision. Well, we said in the last part of the question that the two players stuck together. So that means that the kinetic energy is one half multiplied by the sum of their masses multiplied by their combined velocity squared. That's half times 195 multiplied by 0 0.23 squared. That gives us quite a small kinetic energy. We end up with only 4.9 joules of kinetic energy after the collision. So what can we say? Well, since the kinetic energy before the collision is not equal to the kinetic energy after the collision, we can say that the collision is not an elastic collision. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is an inelastic collision. And you should always state that, so we're writing here the collision is inelastic.